Hello. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the uh, official hub at Social Media Week London. This is our second event of the afternoon, and boy, is it full. If it gets really warm in here, start waving at us, or, or just, if you can gently perspire at us, then we'll also know that it's too warm. Um, we're going to try and work on the thermostat, and hopefully with the, the uh, door open, it won't, uh, <coughs> excuse me, it won't get too warm. Um, so a couple of bits of housekeeping you've probably spotted uh, around, I should probably introduce myself, hello. Uh, I'm uh, Sam Michelle from Chinwag, we're the lead organisers of Social Media Week London, which is a bit like herding cats with 180 events and 80 event organisers. As you've probably seen, there's a lot going on. And thank you for coming today to this. Um, so the housekeeping bits, if you haven't hooked into Wi-Fi, there are three Wi-Fi points. Um, the password is forum with a lowercase f, in case you've seen the wrong signs and you can't get on. Um, there is a hashtag for each event, and I'm looking around the room, as you can see it up there. It's SMWCCFB. Is that marking? Yes. Or, if you're like me and you've got big sausage fingers and you don't want to put in a, you need more space for your tweet, use SMWLDN. So I've uh, rabbited on enough. What I'd like to do is say a big thank you to Constant Contact, who are hosting today's session and will supercharge your Facebook marketing. They're global sponsors of Social Media Week in six cities around the world. So if you hear their accents, you'll know that they've been jetting around uh, and getting involved, and we're really, really grateful for their support. Have you seen the events across the week are free, and without sponsors like Constant Contact, we wouldn't be able to do any of this, so thank you very much for enabling that. So that's enough from me. You want to know about how to supercharge Facebook, don't you? So I'm going to hand over to Azure from Constant Contact to tell you how to do it. Hi. Look at my... <laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Azure Collier, and I'm from Constant Contact um, from our US office. I'm joined today by my colleagues, uh, Annette Iafretti. I cannot say your last name. Sorry, Annette. <laughs> from our UK office, and Erica Ayat, who also joins me from our US office. So, um, Before I move on a little bit, I wanted to find out about the people in the audience here. Raise your hands, how many people are doing Facebook marketing? How many people are using Facebook in some capacity? Okay, good, good, I'm in the right place then. Um, how many of you are just, um, you've been using it a little bit? You know, you've been getting in there a little bit? A couple people. How many are thinking about it, not sure where to start, not sure what to do? Raise your hands, okay. Not sure what the rest of you are up to then. <laughs> so, good, this works. Um, so my role with Constant Contact, I'm a social media education developer, which means um, I present webinars on best practice um, with social media marketing, and I'm usually on the other side of the computer and um, doing the webinars that way. And you can reach me at acolliertconstantcontact.com. I'm on Twitter. Here's our information for our UK office, the website, Facebook, and Twitter if you're interested. And everybody, we're going to send you the slides as well, so if you don't catch this information right now, you'll get it later. So a little bit about me. Um, I've been doing social media marketing since 2005. I started um, working in universities in the US um, doing social media for higher education. Um, I also, in graduate school, wrote my thesis. I did thesis research on how young adults use social media to communicate in their relationships. And I love social media marketing so much that I do it in my spare time. Um, this uh, screenshot here on the right, I have a friend who's a mayor of a town in Massachusetts and I do her social media marketing when she runs for re-election. And she did win, um, so I hope the Facebook page had something to do with it. Um, the screenshot on the right is some social media marketing I do for a local nonprofit, the United Way. They have a couple of day-long events that they do and so I help with their event social media marketing before, during, and after the event. And then there's my husband. <laughs> I do social media marketing for his Facebook page. Um, my husband, Ed Collier, is a photographer. Um, and I've convinced him to give me control of his Facebook page. So it's a pretty good uh, situation we've got here. I do his social media marketing, and he cooks me dinner. And he's really good at ordering pizza. <laughs> so this presentation today, we're going to go over four different parts. We'll look at marketing on Facebook, why it's important, then planning your Facebook marketing, publishing and promoting to stay on top of mind, and then measuring. So what is your best source for new business? Any guesses? Word of mouth marketing. It's the best way to get new customers in the door. And you're already doing a lot of good word of mouth marketing offline. 
Well, you can do it online as well. With Facebook, you can provide value, get more likes, get more engagement, and get more shares. But how? With Facebook marketing. So there are more than 845 million users of Facebook, about half of them log in daily. In the UK, we have 29 million Facebook users, and about half of the population is on Facebook. So there's a lot of you on there, a lot of businesses on there, and a lot of your customers are on Facebook. And what are they doing with social media? Well, a lot of them are connecting with the brands they like. They're doing it in the top three social media uh, platforms, but most people are looking for Facebook when they want to connect with their favorite brands. And also, what are they doing on Facebook? Well, they're exchanging a lot of content. Every 20 minutes, you'll have a million links shared, you'll have status updates, two million photos, 10 million comments. You want your content to be part of this cycle. You want your content to be shared, to be tagged. You want your photos to be commented on. And when we're looking at Facebook marketing, we're really focusing on the Facebook page. There's a couple of different kinds of accounts you can get with Facebook. So just to explain the difference, you have a Facebook business page if you have likes. You have a profile if you have friends. And you have a group if you have members. So it gets a little confusing sometimes, but that's the difference between the three. And pages are the best way to market your business. Um, Facebook's standards, they want people to use profiles for a pe people, for a person. They prefer that you use pages to market your business. They are public and easily shareable. So the information you're putting out on a Facebook page can, is seen in public, it can be commented on, people can see what's going on. With a Facebook page, there's software, there's applications you can use to run promotions in a professional way. And you're not gonna get that with a profile or a group. There's just not the ability to do that. And the third thing is that Facebook, when you use the page, you get statistics. They call it Facebook Insights. And it gives you a look at the demographics of the people that like your page, the activity that's going on, what they're doing, where they live. So you get a lot of information about how you're doing. Now, if you do not have a Facebook page, I refer you to our social media quick starter site, socialquickstarter.com. We've got a lot of great resources there, step-by-step -step instructions on setting up your page. And we also have lots of instructions for those of you who are interested in some of the other social media, Twitter, LinkedIn, and some other sites as well. Now, you probably are posting on Facebook a bit. You've got some fans and they have friends. So this is your potential reach, the friends of your fans. You're not gonna get all 800 million people on Facebook. It would be nice, but it's not gonna happen. So your best bet is to put out great content, get those fans interested, and get their friends interested, and by reaching that target, it will amplify your reach between 40 and 130 times. Now, having likes is great for your business. It's hard to put your finger on exactly what the ROI is of using Facebook for your marketing, but we do know that having fans is great because 56% of people are more likely to recommend you after becoming a fan on Facebook, and 51% are more likely to buy from you. And here's the truth about Facebook pages. 96% of people do not come back to that page once they've liked it. It's just how Facebook works. If you're a user, you, kn you know this yourself, you go to a business page, you like it, and then the page comes to you through the content that shows up in your newsfeed. So what you need to do is put that content out there that reaches your fans, that gets into their newsfeed. Less than 14% of your fans will see what you post, and it's because of Facebook's ranking system called EdgeRank. It's an algorithm that decides what each individual person sees uh, when uh, your posts appear and when they come into the newsfeed. So you've got more control over this than you think. Um, one of the first things you can do is get that content out there that they like, get them to like your posts. To Facebook, this means you are relevant to that fan. The second thing you can do is get them to comment and share, because once they do that, your, um, your content is seen by their friends. So Facebook not only says um, we're, you're relevant to that fan, you're also relevant to their friends. The third thing you can do, post deliberately, post with a purpose. Don't just put things out there. Uh, really think about that content you're putting out there. Is this information that people are interested in? And if you do that, you're going to drive them back to your Facebook page. Let's talk about likeonomics, the value of engagement. Uh, different actions are weighed differently on Facebook. What's good is getting a page like. So when someone likes your page, 
it's an endorsement of your page and you can keep communicating with them. What's better is if they like or comment on your content. It's an even stronger level of endorsement and that content appears more in their newsfeed and then seen by their friends. The best is if you can get them to share your content. This shows Facebook you're absolutely interested in what that brand has to say and it's more likely that content's going to be seen by their friends in the newsfeed because the fans interacted with it. Um, and it's great word of mouth to the friends of your fans. Now, how many of you out there feel one of these or more? I don't know how to make Facebook work for my organization. No one knows about it. Don't have time to do it. I don't know what to put out there, and I'm not getting the results I want. Anybody feel like this sometimes? Look around, these are your people. They feel your pain. We need to start thinking that <laughs> posting on Facebook is not the same thing as marketing on Facebook. There's a lot more to it than that than just putting out posts. The rest of this seminar is going to look at how to market effectively on Facebook and go beyond posting. So you can market effectively by using software to create professional promotions on your Facebook page, Facebook tabs. Uh, there's a lot of software out there to do this, and we have some. We, we think ours is the best. Uh, it's called Social Campaigns, and it allows you to create those um, those promotions and get people to engage with you and interact with your page. A social campaign will help you supercharge your Facebook marketing by getting more fans, word of mouth, more engagement, and measurable results. So essentially what you're doing with social campaigns is you're applying marketing basics and bringing it into the world of Facebook. This is how a social campaign works. It starts when you talk about your campaign on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, or in emails and tell people that you got a promotion. A potential fan sees a link to that, they go to your page, and they have to like that page to get that promotion, to get that value. It's referred to as a like gate. There's two stages to a social campaign. A new fan comes in and sees that like gate, which tells them um, what's so great about your page, what's the value they're going to get out of it, and what that promotion is. When they like the page, then they're moved on to the reveal page, which has your offer, and they can share that with their friends. So this is how it works, the full picture. You publicize your offer, a fan sees it, they like your page, they get to fulfill that offer, and then they share with the rest of their friends, bringing you new fans to your page. And your current fans get an offer as well. Um, one of Facebook's rules about giveaways is that it should be open to everybody. So with social campaigns, you're able to reward those loyal fans as well as the new people that come to your door. Um, when someone already likes your page and you promote it, they're going to be taken straight to the offer. We've got a, a customer of ours, Sugarbush Ski Resort in Vermont, that has created a social campaign. And their goal was to get 1,500 new subscribers. They ran a, uh, a giveaway where people could enter this contest to get ski vacations and ski equipment if they liked the page. And here's what they did. Their social campaign, their like page, talked about the giveaway, um, $15,000 in prizes. And when they like the page, they're taken to a page to actually enter the contest. And then they get some descriptions about the different prizes. They also talked about it in their email invites to their mailing list. They posted about it on Facebook, reminding their current fans that they can take advantage of this offer. Talked about it on Twitter. And they also went on the walls of the Facebook pages of their vendors to tell them this was available. From this one campaign, they got 3,000 new fans and 1,900 email subscribers. So it really worked for them to give their new fans something of value, give something to their loyal fans, um, really engaging information that got them to their page. So now we've seen one business that's been successful with social campaigns. The first step to doing your own social campaign is to develop a plan to drive people to your page. Think about what your customers need to do to be successful, to make you successful. What's, what's going to work for you? Is it getting them to come in your store? Do you want them to book your services with you, um, talk about you, or maybe you're promoting an event? Whether you're selling a product, offering a service, or promoting a cause, think about that offer that's going to provide value to your fans. Is it a discount, content, or a prize draw? 
and think about, is this something you would take advantage of if you were on the other side of the equation? You can use coupons, sales, downloadable content, videos, fundraising, lots of different options for social campaigns to drive business to you. And we know the number one, people, number one reason people like a page is to get those discounts, those coupons, that exclusive content. If you're a B2C, one of the things you can do with a social campaign is offer those discounts, those coupons. Um, this croissant example, they offer 15% off of a uh, coupon off a of purchase, so if someone likes their page and then they're taken to that coupon. If you're a B2B, you want to get in leads. So one of the things you can do is share your knowledge, share your information, offer people some tips, some best practices that they can get by liking your page with a downloadable document. If you're a nonprofit, you can use social campaigns to spread the word about what you do, or also offer them as a way for people to donate directly to you. We've got some UK customers that have used social campaigns. One of them is the Star Inn in East Titherley. I hope I said that right. Um, what they want to do is they, they, um, they have a lot of different age groups that come to them. They have a lot of different events, book clubs and bands and things like that. They wanted to get the word out about their events, share more information, and let people know what's going on. They did a social campaign just letting people know about the events that they're having and to drive more people to their Facebook page. Through that campaign, they've been getting more likes, they've been getting more people in the door, and it's kind of hard not to when you have things like a pint, a pie, and Pilates. <laughs> <laughs> so people really enjoy what they're putting out there. They're, they're getting those people to their events all through Facebook. Energy Therapy, another company that's been successful with social campaigns, their goal was to tell more people about what they do. Um, so they're presenting it in a professional way on a tab on their page, giving people access to information about them. And they've had more inquiries. They've had more people starting to um, ask them about their services and book things, and they're growing their Facebook fans. And then there's Metro Health and Fitness, Fitnerama magazine. They wanted to increase awareness of their magazine. Through that social campaign, they let people know, got them through the door, and once they liked their page, you were able to enter a contest to be a model in the magazine. And they've gotten more fans since then, and, and again, more inquiries from people interested in what they do. When you run a social campaign, the rule of thumb is to put aside two to three weeks for it. It's enough time for, to get people interested, make it urgent, but um, not going on so long that they kind of forget that it's there. When you do plan out that campaign, sit down with a calendar and write down all the different ways that you can talk about the campaign. Can you put it out on Twitter? Can you put it out on LinkedIn? Can you send an email reminding people? That way you've got all that communication covered and you're creating more awareness about it. Make sure you have a clear call to action on your campaign. Don't dance around it. Let people know exactly what you want them to do. With this Italian restaurant, it's like us and get 10% off your next meal. Once you've created that campaign, you need to get the word out there. So let's talk about publishing and promoting. There is no guaranteed way to get results from your campaign from just Facebook. You need to talk about it everywhere. So put it um, on your Facebook page with your current fans, but talk about it on Twitter as well. Talk about it in your emails. Put signs up at your store. Um, talk about it in a blog post. You never know when someone's going to come across this information on a different channel. Every tweet, every blog post, every email is another chance to get you in front of the eyes of new customers. So is running that social campaign all you need to do to be successful on Facebook? Absolutely not. It's part of an ongoing relationship you have with your fans. You need to put that content out there that they're interested in, that they're engaged in, and that will bring them back to you. A lot of people struggle with content, but it's really right in front of you. You don't have to think too hard about that content. I don't know if they're here, but Chiltern Railways had signed up for today. Um, they have a great Facebook page. Their content is all around them. They do things like posting pictures of the snowmen people are building at the stops. Climate Week, I'm not sure if they're here either. Um, they do a great job of capturing their own conversations. You have events, you have photos, you have conversations, you have success stories with your customers. Talk about that, let people know about what you do. People who see that can relate to that. Oh, you know, that, that success story that they had, I have that issue too, maybe they can help me. 
and know your audience. Ocado does this really well, and I'm not sure if they're here today either, but um, they, they're foodies, their audience is foodies. Um, they love to share things like recipes and talk about the products they have. And they just posted Facebook questions the other day that talked about what do you want to get your sweetheart for Valentine's Day? It was chocolate um, cocktails and something else, but most people said chocolate and cocktails, so they've got a recipe for both. When you run that social campaign, talk about it, but don't say the same thing over and over again. There's ways to let people know about it without getting them bored of hearing that same message. With this bakery example, they brought it out. Uh, they had that 15% off coupon. So they decided to do a multiple choice question. Um, what would you spend your coupon on? Which product? The second thing they did was um, asking people, if you could create a croissant flavor, what would you do? The third one, they posted a photo and asked people if it made them hungry for croissants. So they're getting on the minds of their fans without being pushy about it. When you're dry, having a social campaign and you've got that two to three week period, that urgency is going to help you. Let people know, oh, we have a week left, we have a day left. Um, whatever time period you've got, it, you know, time's running out to take advantage of our offer. Also update them. Talk about how many people have been coming in the store, getting, uh, exchanging that coupon, or if part of that social campaign is to get more fans, maybe you had a goal of 500, talk about it. We're at 250, we're halfway there, we need your help. So this helps them remind them about their offer and using that urgency to get them there. You can grow your email list if you do a social campaign. If you've got a sign up box on your campaign page, save that list as a separate list. You know where those people came from then. You know they're interested in what you do on Facebook. And then in the future, when you have another offer on Facebook, you can email that list because you know they're interested. Now that you've created your campaign, you've started to talk about it, you need to find out if this is what you were hoping for in the beginning. Is this um, success for you? So we need to measure those results. Every social campaign is supposed to help you achieve those results, drive the sharing, get people to talk about you, engage with your audience, and then grow your network of fans. Think about that goal at the beginning. What did you want to do? If the goal was to increase sales, then you need to do a coupon campaign. If you're a B2B, you want more leads, then share that knowledge with a downloadable campaign. If you're a nonprofit, you want to raise money, raise awareness, then you would use a donation campaign. And then people who have an event, event campaign, their goal is to fill the seats. If you use social campaigns, we will tell you how it's doing, how it's growing. Uh, you know, we'll talk about the new number of new Facebook fans, new email contacts. We'll also give you a picture of where your audience is active on other social media. If they share your promotion, it will track where do they share it. Was it on Twitter? Was it on LinkedIn? Did they email their friends? This will help you concentrate on all those other channels. It'll help you answer that question, what other social media can I be using? Because people do have um, concerns about that. You know, do How many accounts do I need to have for my business? Well, if you're finding that people are sharing your promotion on Twitter and not LinkedIn, then you might want to focus more on Twitter. So this will help you narrow that down. You'll also get a, a glimpse on what kind of topics people are interested in. If you include links in your social campaign, we will show you how many people clicked on them. So maybe you shared a video and it went through the roof. That way you know that people are interested in that video content, that topic you're putting out there, um, and this will help shape more of that content to your audience. There's numbers, but there's also engagement to track success. Um, my husband's um, photography page, that campaign that I showed you earlier, that was for a Halloween portrait session. So we had a day-long event. And we really were able to judge the success by the engagement. As we posted photos through the day, parents started to comment on them. Their friends saw that activity in the newsfeed. They went to the page to talk about it, so it drove more people to the page. That's the power of content sharing. Get that great content out there, engage your fans, and they're going to bring new people to your page. You need to have a plan for the future. And if you do social campaigns, if you sit down and you think about it, what's going on for me in the next year? What kind of products am I offering? What kind of events do I have coming up? Are there seasonal things that I can have a promotion around? Think about that, and you can have a couple of promotions that will fill out the rest of your year. Just a checklist for you to think about. When you're creating social campaigns, tap into what your audience wants. That will help you create that great offer. 
when you pr use software like social campaigns, you're going to have a professional looking Facebook tab. When you're creating your social campaign, think about exactly what you want your audience to do. What's that call to action that they can act on? And keep it going. Don't just do social campaigns only. Make sure you've got engaging content that your audience wants and they will keep in touch with you. You'll stay at the top of their mind. When you use your other communication resources, send out emails, talk about your um, social campaigns on Twitter and LinkedIn, this will also increase awareness. You'll get people in these other places. And make sure you're measuring. How much are you growing in numbers and how much are you growing in the conversation? And that is our look at creating a social campaign, supercharging your Facebook marketing. Information for our UK offices right here. And this month is February. It's not February, it's February. Um, anyone who signs up for social campaigns this month, you'll be entered in a contest to earn 600 pounds for you and also for your business's biggest fan. Oh, I think that was the last one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Erica Ayat, um, colleague from my our office in Waltham. <laughs> I'm sorry. So I guess we wanted to. Yeah. Have questions um, or yeah. If there are any questions out there, Annette and and uh, Erica and I would be happy to answer them. Yeah. So yeah. we know we wanted to leave a lot of time because we know this is so new for everybody that we wanted to use this more as almost a workshop to say what are the questions as we've gone through this. Some people are. I don't know if you can hear me, I'm pretty loud. <laughs> oh, okay, we're filming. So um, some of the things is a lot of people are at various stages, so it's kind of hard to engage where are people. Uh, so we specifically wanted to talk about how are you marketing your business, share some successes. Um, Erica Ayot runs our entire corporate social media strategy. She's got some great hints and tips. So sort of what we went through here is thinking about seriously doing a campaign on Facebook. It's not, as um, Azure was saying, it's not just posting. It's uh, for the, most of you who are doing social media, I'm sure you've been marketing your businesses or your services. So how do you integrate that and actually do that on Facebook? As, as you saw, we've got a number of people that are being very successful, but it's really an application of marketing strategies and then integrating a number of those channels. Um, I think the only, you know, the, the hard part is not the technology so much as, you know, how do I work this into a new distribution channel? So one of the things we wanted to do now is um, have Erica share her knowledge. Our focus is, uh, and the reason for this uh, project in particular, is our focus is really on the smaller and medium-sized businesses. So how do you do this yourself without necessarily having to to invest in you know, thousands of dollars of, of software or platforms. So we wanted to open it up um, to questions first, and then Erica has a number of tips to talk about just as you're doing your general strategy, particularly as either a, a okay, I'm gonna get this wrong. I'm actually living here, but I'm from New York. We call them sole proprietor, sole trader. So um, if you're an independent, if you have a smaller business or you're operating online, we do have some strategies of how do you use social media to incorporate all the channels together. So on that, we'll turn it over to, are you might. No. Hmm? No. Um, no. Well, we could, do you want to take some questions? Right. Yeah, I'll take some questions and we'll pass that around. I fall into this sole trader category, although I have lots of people like volunteering around me. Right. And I'm kind of working on quite a large project at the moment. Part of it is based in the UK, and part of it is based in Africa. Now, I don't really want to set up two separate pages, but what, what is best? Is it best to have two different pages? The things are linked, but they are kind of different. Is it best to have two separate pages, or can kind of effectively do everything through one? Well, it kind of depends on your business model. Does ever is ever first of all is everyone speaking the same language? Literally, are they all speaking English? English, most of Okay, yes. great. So that's a good start. Um, so, how many uh, people have liked your page so far? Is it very large or is it no, small? No, no, it's about. I think starting 200. out, you might want to start with one and then segment from there. So, for example, what we've done just from a corporate perspective at Constant Contact is we started off with one and then we segmented from there as our fan size grew. 
Oh, sorry, I was trying to talk a little louder. What I was saying was that um, it, it's best to start out with one and then kind of see what direction your audience goes in, see what, your, what comprises your fan base, and then decide from there whether, you know, first of all, do you have uh, the, enough resources to manage to? That's really number one. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so if you can only do one well, just do one, because you don't want to have two and ha to have one done poorly. Uh, the other thing is, um, do you have a different, do you have enough content that's going to be different for each page? If you're just going to be repeating the same thing on each page, it might not be worth it. So I would start there and, you know, as you grow, it might be an opportunity to, to segment off later. I would also think about the volume of content too. If you get larger and maybe some content is isolating other people on your page and it's all about the one area, you, at that point you might also think right. about getting a second page for that. I was thinking as well like how effectively to get those people, I've built up the, the audience on this one page, I want to introduce them to this next project that a lot of them will probably be interested in, okay. and it's like, how do I transfer them all effectively then if I was going to do two pages, do you know what I mean? Right, okay, so if you were going to do that, one thing you could do is just start um, uh, sharing, if, you're, if you have one page and you're posting content to that secondary page, share as a page the content onto your main page, because that way they'll be able to see that link to the, your secondary page. And you can actually, um, I would filter in a few calls to action saying, hey, if you're interested about this, here's our other page, go visit it, like it, you'll be able to see information. Just tell them exactly what you want them to do, which is exactly what Azure was saying earlier. Okay, great, thank you. Hi, um, I run the Facebook page for a fashion brand and we've oh, got um, 34,000 fans globally and we sort of deliver worldwide. But um, I've got a, a kind of working example because we're having a sample sale in London on Thursday and Friday. And um, so far I've, I've put up, um, I've made an event and I've shared that and I've chosen to just share it with people in the UK because I thought um, I could share it with just London, but I thought some people might travel. Mm -hmm. um, could you give me some tips on how to share that? Because so far, the only people that have commented have been people saying, oh, I'm from here, can't you do one here? Rather than people saying, oh my God, I'm going to go, because it's a sample sale. We want to kind of try and make it really crazy, and people die to go. Right. So um, are the statuses you're posting just text? Um, we've got pictures, and because I've set up the event, the event has a profile so the picture, it's so, event. so it's just um, a picture sort of saying sample sale, and it's got one of our editorial images on. So, so a couple it. ideas. I mean, one thing you could do is to post pictures of actual people in the outfits or wearing some of your um, some of the things that are in the sale. So you can say, hey, this is an example of one thing that you could might be able to find here. Pictures and video or any sort of rich media get shared and viewed far more often than other types of status updates. And there's such, you, you, know, you have such a great base of content with working in fashion. So there's a lot of opportunity there to do that. I mean, I don't know what your, you know, if you could do, even do a video of different outfits or... Or, or was someone from your staff um talking about what's going on, holding you know, up the different items in the video. Right, you could do that as well. You could also have people vote. You could say, do you, you know, here's one outfit that we put together. Uh, like it if you like it, and if you, know, if you, do, you could see which ones get the most at the end of the week. That's something um, that we've touched on with the staff, because yeah. obviously we've got, we've got loads of like, fashionable girls working for us, and like, right. we've got loads of like, really like, lovely interns and things mm -hmm. who are our core customers. But um, I think uh, we're a bit hesitant on almost putting a face to your brand. Say, mm -hmm. say if I made a video and started talking about the products, what if someone watched that video and thought, actually, I don't really like that girl, and, and then they associate me with the brand, and then they're kind of a bit turned off? Do you, what do you well, think well, there's about a, that? There, clearly, there's a risk in anything you do in social media. Someone's going to like it or they're going to not. And you're never going to be able to please 100% of the people 100% of the time. But I think from... It, I think you have far more to gain than you have to lose. If you have, if you, by putting a face to a brand, you're humanizing it. By showing who the people are behind the curtain, you're making a deeper connection with, um, with your audience. So I don't think, as long as you know they're presenting your brand in a way that um, is appropriate and, and fun, um, then I would say go for it. And you're Thank probably you. a lot like your um, fans as well, that you probably share the same interests. So they could look at that video and go, wow, that's just like me, or that's what I would do, that's what I would pick. So they can relate to you. Um, light gating. We, we've been advised to do some light gating around our business. And there's been some internal discussions from 
personal preferences. And people said that they avoid light-gated sites or light-gated pages. We're not quite sure what they mean by that. I mean, why would people avoid light-gating? And what's the best way not to? Because obviously, it's a clear way to build your fan base quickly. So um, what we talked about today was, was light gating. It's giving fans, asking fans to like you in exchange for something. Um, if there's something you can offer that won't break the bank, but will give them some value and make them happy about what you do, um, that's, a, that's a win win for both of you. So you're getting new people to like your page, getting in your door, but you're also, your fans are remembering you, they're getting that coupon, they're getting whatever it is that you're offering in exchange for that like. So it's just, you know, do you have things that you can offer to your fans in exchange? And the other thing, too, about light gating is that, um, uh, oh my gosh, I just lost my time. <laughs> Sorry. Um, it, is that what it is, what social media is and what light gating is, is just another form of permission-based marketing. Just like email marketing, when you're asking someone for their email address and they're allowing you to contact them, it's the same thing with social, whether they follow you on Twitter or like your page on Facebook. They're saying, yes, I want to see more of, the con more of your content in my newsfeed or in my Twitter stream. And one of the, you know, in our research that one of the slides we had is that the number one people, reason people like a page is because you're giving them something in exchange. They are going to find this on your Facebook page, not on somewhere else. They're going to get that discount on your Facebook page and not, you know, through your web page or something else. Hi there. I'm just doing some uh, development of Facebook apps for brands. And um, one of the things that we were looking at is the edge rank and the 14%, uh -huh. so it's, a, it's quite a shocking figure really that 86% of people don't see what your updates are. And I, I just wonder whether they're dead and you can't reach them, or if some people see some of the stuff some of the time, or if there's tactics for reinvigorating those people. What, what would you advise? In that? Well, I think that's 14% at any one time. And so the key is to post frequently, though not over post. So at least at Constant Contact, what we do is post about two times a day, um, for you know, for most businesses, I would suggest posting a, a couple times a week to a, you know twice a day at the maximum. Um, but yeah, so what you want to do is be able to post frequently. And the other thing about edge rank is that it's all um, it's it, it takes into account all the collective uh, engagement factors. So things such as liking, sharing, commenting, and as long as you're focused on driving those actions, more of your posts will be seen. So for example, um, just from the, so what we do at Constant Contact is sometimes we post things that are specifically designed just to get comments because that's a very high value action from an edge rank algorithm perspective. So what that means is that um, edge rank weights comments um, greater than it weights likes. So the best way to do that is to ask your audience a question. One thing that people really don't think about Facebook too much as is a business intelligence tool, and you can learn so much about your customers just by asking them. And so making sure that you um, have a clear call to action, sometimes you can ask people to like or ask someone to share. Now you don't wanna do that too often because you might, if you do it too much, no one will do, <laughs> they'll, they'll get bored of that. But um, you know, use it on high value things. And so just make sure you're structuring your posts to um, really elicit that engagement. Just to be clear, though, if I, if I have liked a brand and then I don't see one of your posts, does that mean I won't see any of the other posts, or I will, will I not see one but then see others appearing in my newsfeed, or is it, or is it not like that? Well, it, it depends on timing as well. Um, though, you know, the most important, if you if you go if you look at your newsfeed and you press that little sort button, and you can see either the the, the most important or what Facebook deems is the most important, or you could see the most recent. So part of it is a time factor. Um, and it depends on how much you're engaging with that brand. If you start to engage with that brand, or that even uh, goes down to the level of friends, too, if this is, we're talking about a profile, if you start to engage with one person or brand even more, then they'll start to show up more frequently in your feed. He said that if your friends also like, so that's also a really great point too. So if your network, if you have liked a brand and people in your network have also liked a brand, if they start to comment on it, Facebook will then recognize, oh, your friends like this page and you like this page and they're starting to engage with it more, maybe you do as well. Uh, I was wondering if you could comment on uh, how would you go about uh, creating initial uh, attention to your page, especially if it's something temporary. Suppose mm -hmm. you are working on a project or you're running a competition and you want people to sign up 
and especially if you're not actually located at the site of the competition. I'm sorry, what was that last part? If you're not local, so if you are running the competition, say, in Philadelphia. Okay. So uh, let me uh, repeat the question again. Um, you're having a competition, and you want people to like your so, page to find out more information about yes, it? Yes, exactly. Okay. What kind of competition is it? Uh, well, this particular one is a uh, uh, crowdsourcing effort to map uh, defibrillators in Philadelphia to create a map of AEDs. Okay. Um, well, you probably want to start with your email list. Yeah. <laughs> you start with your email list and let them know that this is going on. Um, don't overlook your other communication channels, too. Um, and back to the email list for just a second. You can send an email just about this to them, but if you have a regular communication with them, don't forget about your newsletters also. What are those other regular communications you have with your, with your list, with your customer base? Well, actually, in our case, we don't have a customer base. That's oh, okay. my question. If you don't have any email list, you just need to start from scratch. How would you do it? Would you use, uh, would you advertise on Facebook, on Google? What's the best way? Well, I think advertising on Facebook is a great way to, to start. Usually ads are fairly inexpensive. And the other thing, too, is that Facebook has been playing around with discounting ads if you keep them within Facebook. So, for example, if your ad links back to your Facebook page, um, typically it will cost you less than if you were driving them to an outside website. But you do need to be really smart about how you're targeting and who you want to target. Um, and so I think the, the other thing too is once you, get a, once you have a small base is really encourage them to share. Because what sharing does in contrast to liking or commenting is getting that information into the newsfeed of their friends. So if you and I are friends, but you haven't liked a constant contact page and I share something from it, you will then see it. So that's the type of stuff that you want to start out with. But um, ads are usually, you know, they can drive up uh, a fan base pretty fast if you're doing it in the right way. And don't forget about if there's people you're working with, other groups that are helping right. you with the project, do you have vendors? Like the ski resort who went on the, one of the vendors pages, hey, people can win your stuff by entering our contest. So anybody else you're working with, any, um, if you're working with the city itself, you know, go on the city of Philadelphia's page and talk about it. We, you, know, you have a chance to help people here, and you, know, you can post Azure page on other people's pages. Uh, we have some experience advertising on Facebook, and it was rather negative. We noticed a lot of people were clicking likes, and they were people who just have dozens of likes every day. So they don't seem so to be seem really a little spammy. Heavy. Yeah. So I think you, know, you might want to take a look at your targeting and make sure you refine it a little bit more. But I really like your question because it kind of gets to the heart of the way that people view social media as something separate and unique and not as part of what they would do as a business or, or as part of their marketing plan as a whole. And so the biggest piece of advice that I always tell businesses, either if they're you know a one-person shop or if they have thousands of employees, is that think of social media as more horizontal versus a vertical, meaning you know, if you have say, you know, you might have sales over here and marketing over here, and then people tend to want to put social media in this bucket that's off to the side. When really, there's a lot of opportunity in, to incorporate social media into a lot of the stuff that you're already doing. Like Azure was talking about co-branding. Like if you have any event partners, making sure that you loop some social calls to action with the partner that can really help drive um, network size on your Facebook page. Any, any of them. Any of them. <laughs> Can you target or filter a business to business okay. audience versus a business consumer audience? For example, when you want to convey a message only to the business to business part of your uh, activity. Yeah, so he asked, is there a way to target your audience from a, to filter your audience from, to put them into segments for B2B, B2C? Is that your, the, Many on Facebook, got a, a business to business, right, and a business to consumer, right, or a, or a product that goes to business to business, fair, but ultimately the user is the. Oh, I see. So you're talking about a, a reseller community versus an end user community. You may not want to know the end user that you give a X percent discount to the tradesman. Right. Yeah. So I think that 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 would be a great candidate for a second presence because you have two distinct audiences. In that case, you have a B two B audience who's really concerned about one thing, and a B two C or an end user audience that's really concerned about something else, or they could be. Um, you wouldn't post the same content on both, and you'd have different uh, different ways of engaging each community. So I would recommend that that that's a, an instance where you might want to have two separate communities. Um, 
Or you might want to even think about LinkedIn, which is right. more career oriented. And a lot of B2Bs we're finding are really focusing on LinkedIn for things like that, where they're really trying to get to that business audience. Um, that's where they're going because sometimes the people that, you know, you're using your personal account to interact. So, you know, I might not want to use Facebook as a B2B employee, but I might want to do my business in LinkedIn instead. Yeah, that's a great point. How do you target the uh, high end market? How do you target the high end market um, specifically? Uh, what market, or do you have an industry in particular? or? Travel industry. Well, I mean, it's just the same. It's the same way you would target any market, big or small. It's knowing your audience, uh, figuring out what type of content that do they respond to, and a lot of that is experimentation. And don't be afraid to experiment. There's a lot of opportunity to post. Like you know, for constant contact, we're posting on Facebook so you know multiple times a day. Not every post is going to get a uh, hundred likes and a hundred comments, but that's okay because your audience will tell you by their interest, by you know if they're liking or responding to your content, if they if they like that or not. So I think the thing is to really start with knowing your audience um, and then just build a community around that. I mean, high-end market, low-end market, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. It really starts with who are your customers and what are they gonna respond to. And this might sound basic, but ask them. Yes. Go on Facebook and say, hey, we just started a Facebook page. What do you guys want from us on here? People do that all the time. It's really basic, you don't think about it. Right. But the Facebook questions that you can use, ask people, start a poll. What do you wanna hear from us? Yeah, and you can even use the polling app if you want to get really specific. So it allows you to get a really hard number. Say you, say you want to ask your customers, do you want X, Y, or Z to be on sale this week? And then you can see um, a, a hard number for each one so you don't have to read through all the comments and, and, and uh, tally those up on your own. Hi, I've uh, just built and uh, entered all the information for an LGBT listing site, like a sort of gay trip advisor. Okay. Um, I've launched it, but I'm getting about three visitors a day. I'm going to do an email campaign. I'm a little bit nervous about it coming up as spam. Um, and also, I've got a, a sort of a blank Facebook page that I want to um, uh, want to basically spread spread the word. How do I start from there, please? So you said you had an you have an email list. Yes. And you have a website. Yes. And you have a Facebook page, but haven't posted anything Nothing. yet. All right. So first of all, I mean, do you, first of, you want to link all three, right? So if you have, you can first email your list and drive them to both your website and your Facebook page. Um, within your Facebook page or within your website, you can make sure you have a, a call to action to visit your Facebook page. On your Facebook page, you can even have an email sign up. So really, it's again about linking all three and not thinking of social media as separate, but integrated with all three. And so I would just say, you know, take some of the information that's on your website and start putting it on Facebook. So, you know, for example, if you have a, you know, a blog, that would be great to be able to post that content every day. Or um, ask questions around, you know, where do you, where's your, where do you want your next trip to be, or, or, or anything like that. So you can start filling that Facebook page through both your website and your email list. And that's all organic, and of course you can take, you know, other advertising avenues later if you. If it's you okay to. to recycle that content yeah. too. You did you do a newsletter? Post a link to that on Facebook. Maybe someone's watching your Facebook page, but they're not an email subscriber. Then you can get them because they're following you a different way. Hi. Uh, so you mentioned the uh, Facebook marketing is, is not only posting on the wall, and uh, as I understand, you you create custom tab basically, right? right. And uh, so, so the way to, to do that, to, to get your fans back to the tab, is to put a link to your tab, right? Uh, so, so what are the extra efforts that you would do, you know, posting on the wall, posting the link to your tab, but how to promote the, the tab or the efforts that you've put there, the coupon better? Right, so you're saying how do we, how do we drive people to that tab to take advantage of that? Yeah, how would we... Right. Right, so again, it's how would you drive people to uh, a blog post or, or a page on your website? So, you know, obviously email. You want to post multiple times about the campaign on Facebook itself. You, I, would in, I would advise not posting every day about the campaign. But what you can do is really build a content schedule based around the campaign. So you can make sure that, you know, whatever your campaign is about, have some related content um, on Facebook, in your newsletter, on your website, that will get everyone thinking about this particular topic and really get them interested for when you post that um, campaign on your Facebook page. You drive them there via email. Um, and think about your other channels as well, if you have LinkedIn, if you have Twitter, if you have, um, say, any of the photo sharing accounts. 
um, and just really linking those and driving to that one. It's just like a, it's just like a, a landing page on a website. That's a good way to think about it. Sit down with a calendar and just go, you know, to, uh, today, Tuesday, I'm going to post on LinkedIn about it. Tomorrow, I'm going to put it in my email newsletter on Wednesday. Um, you, you know, it's not just sitting in front of the computer and going, okay, i got to get this out there. Sit down with a schedule. Plan it out. Plan an editorial calendar. Right. And, and to Azure's point earlier about you don't have to make up totally new content for each post, but you can take the same content and tailor it for each channel or just say it in a different way so it doesn't look repetitive. All right. So, so to put it technically, like practically, how do yeah. I do it? I just put a link on LinkedIn, on Twitter, on that according to my calendar. Yeah, absolutely. You can you can have a each um, tab has a unique URL. Yeah. So then you can use that unique URL and put that in any of your posts, either whether it's email, whether it's LinkedIn, whether it's Twitter. You can just copy and paste that right in, and then drive people to there. Um, one thing to note, though, so um, there's a, a pre-like page and a post like reveal page. So if someone goes to your campaign and they have already liked the page, they'll just see the post like image, if that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, but, but they'll come to the post like welcome tab. Right? Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Right. Exactly. And so you can even use that. You don't even have to be running a coupon or running an event. You can use that as a simple lead capture form. Hmm. And uh, in, in your presentation, I saw conversions and those good things? C can you tell more how your tab works in, in this case? Yeah. Um, it, it takes a look at the, uh, through the campaign tab itself, you know, who's clicked on that and liked it and joined it. If you've got um, an email sign up box to that, um, you know, tracking the number of people that do that. And then from there, you can click on um, any of the other icons for the social media. So you can share this post to your LinkedIn page as a fan. Hey, I just got this great offer. I'm sending it out to my LinkedIn community to also tell them about it, or through Twitter, or sending people an email. There's a great offer on this Facebook page. Click on here and go take advantage of it. Um, it also tracks, so, you know, how many people liked your page, how many people looked your, at your page, and how many people, you know, joined your page um, from, from the campaign that you sent out. So who saw that link on Twitter, clicked through, liked it, and joined it? Those It'll also give you click through stats as well. So if you have multiple links on one campaign, it will tell you how many people click through to each one. Hi. Um, could you tell me uh, how, how long it might take to build a campaign using your service? And, and what's the saving over doing it other ways? What's, what's are the real benefits of your service? Um, it, it takes as long as uh, the content that you have. I mean, if you've got something already, if you've thought about the offer, this is the offer, this is the text we want to use with it, and just type that into um, the like page and then build that offer on the reveal page, um, it could take as 20 minutes, I think, if you've yeah, got everything all together. Um, is you know, just two pages that you're building. Um, and the advantage that we have is that um, we are priced for small business. Um, there's other, there, there's lots of other tools you can use out there as well, but we're right. really focused on small business. Right, and there are templates, um, pre-made templates that we have as well. But in, in the other thing too to note, which I don't know if Azure went over this earlier or not, but you can't, according to Facebook rules, you cannot run a campaign or um, at least an offer on Facebook unless you use a third-party app. So you can't say, you can't have a post on Facebook that says, all right, everyone who likes this post will get a free ice cream. Uh, you can't trade likes and comments or any sort of engagement action for a reward. So you have to use a third-party service according to Facebook rules. So that's another advantage too, is it? Thank you. Um, I've got a number of questions to do with the apps and, and also Constant Contact itself. I work for um, a nonprofit. And we've got a bunch of different uh, newsletters that are run with constant contact. Now, if we were to have a, an, um, a, a way of harvesting emails on, on various locations, how is, how is that managed if people are, are subscribing to multiple lists and um, you want to target and give them the option to opt in or opt out? And, um, it, to it can, opt in or opt out of a campaign? Um, yeah, either campaign or let's say they want to be on this campaign, but it's going to be a limited thing and they don't want to be harvested for later things. Do we give, is there a way for um, them to set it up? So, so let me make sure that I understand your question. Yeah. So you're saying that if you're trading their contact information 
for an offer or a download? How do you, uh, you know, is there a way to, to, to limit what they receive from you afterwards? Well, let, let, um, let me phrase it better. Um, there are multiple parts of this nonprofit that target um, different forms of courses. Some of the people are interested in one form of course and some people are interested in others and some people just want regular information. If people come in for a specific event and are not interested in anything else and they sign up, is there a way for um, the system to register that? that they won't be approached for other things? Um, one of the things you can do is build your sign-up form. So right. when people are signing up for you, you tell them, I check these boxes. I want to hear about this, I want to hear about this, and or I want to hear about this. Okay. So set that expectation from the beginning and so that they know they're comfortable with that. Hey, right. all I want to hear about is their events. Don't send me anything else. Okay. And, and there's language that comes standard in a lot of these templates that expresses you know, you're getting this communication from us because, you know, you, you asked us, you were okay with it. Um, and you can set some expectations up there and, and customize it at the beginning and tell them, look, we're just gathering your information so we can send you news or emails about the things you want to hear about. And right. then they know that that's all you're doing with it. And, and then connected, you, you mentioned uh, the need to use a third party app. Um, we find a lot of resistance with apps of people being asked to share their entire life, their friends, uh, that th the apps are going to post at any stage to their walls or whatever. And we, we'd like to know, you know, how, how would we deal with that, particularly as a nonprofit? Um, when they like your page, they're not giving permission to the app. They're just liking the page. They're liking the page. But if then we um, give an offer, uh, you framed it that the offer needs to be run via a third-party app. Yeah, that's just how the, the technology works. This app doesn't post to any of their pages. All it does is basically builds a custom tab on Facebook. It doesn't post to any of your Okay, so it's not followers. like... Um, they're not opting into an they're app. They're not opting in to receive anything if they click yeah, on this app. Because and the birthday something. apps, if uh, you, no, you want to like, no, 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 it's not like that. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. That, that harvests everything you've got. No, no, no. yeah, no, okay. it, doesn't, it doesn't function like that at all. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm from Joseph Media. What I'd like to know is, if you have a CRM system, um, you have a website, and you also have a mailing list, is it better to collect all the email addresses into one database and then send campaigns to the one list, or is it better to segment those? Okay. Segmenting um, is, is always a good idea, because you, you are going to have that need to target messages to certain groups who want to hear about them. Um, it, it depends on the campaign, too. If it's only going to be something of interest to a segment of your audience, you might want to email them because the other segments might not be into what you're putting out there. All right, we, we've done that before from a, uh, on, const, on the corporate constant contact page. So uh, again, Facebook rules say that whatever um, offer or giveaway you have has to be available to your entire fan base, mm -hmm. not just your new fan base, but if, say, you had an offer that was only applicable to one segment, of your business, what you can do is still host that on Facebook, still have that on um, a Facebook tab, but then just only email a segment of your audience and drive them there. And you know you don't have to post that on Facebook itself if you only are going after a portion. Hi, um, I work for a, a UK-based uh, retailer, and we've got just short of 28,000 follow up fans on Facebook. Ooh, Congratulations. Of which, <laughs> of which um, 800 are, are in France, and we're about to launch a French tra version of our transactional website. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of want some advice on how best to kind of go about that. We're quite prolific on Facebook, but I don't know whether it's just a simple case of kind of translating tweets or whether whether we need to do a little bit more to kind of ingratiate ourselves um, to the new market. I mean, I would say, I mean, I, I don't think that. It, you really need to localize, I would suggest. Mm -hmm. It's not just a matter of translating the posts. I mean, even even with Constant Contact, we have a separate UK Facebook page because uh, it's a separate audience. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, we don't always use the same terms. You might be different, uh, interested in different things. And the worst thing you can do is fake it because yeah. then you won't, because really the, the currency is trust. Mm -hmm. So if they don't trust you, and if you're, you know, just, you know, using translated posts that maybe will, won't resonate with that audience, then you're gonna be running into some trouble. So I would say, make sure that you have someone who knows that audience who's uh, native, yeah. um, who can help you, or who can run it. 
Yeah, we were getting French speakers, but they're not native French. Right. So, and, and the other thing, too, is that you will probably have to deal with customer support issues. Yeah. So you'll have to be very responsive. So I would make sure, I would, I would make sure that you have the appropriate resources okay. first before you launch it. Because okay. the worst thing you can do is to start something and, and do it poorly. Yeah. Wait till you have the resources in place and then go for it. And then you can, you know, promote the heck out of it. Yeah. That sounds good. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I just wondered if there was a way to make your Facebook page um, more searchable. So when you type in whatever company name, um, how you can optimize the search results. Right. So the first thing you'd want to do is to make sure that you have a customized URL. So you can do that within the setting. So instead of having you know, facebook.com slash a string of numbers and letters, make that your, co your company name or, or something very close if that's taken. So that's step one. Um, step two, um, it, it really just make sure you're using the appropriate keywords in your posts. So if you know anything about SEO or search engines, it's the same type of thing. So um, make sure you're getting found for what you know, your company is known for and using the keywords that other people might you know, re resonate with them and they might respond to. And then um, if you're driving a lot of engagement, if, you're, if you have a lot of fans, then you know, your social media sites will start to show up um, in your organic search engine results as well. And the content you're putting out there on your website too, you know, write about, hey, this conversation happened on our Facebook page this week and link to it. So the more you're associated you know, with that link. Right, yeah, that's a great point is link sharing. Um, just two very quick questions. Um, our aim is to build up our community and our audience and fan base because we're attached to a TV show. Um, so eventually that community might have quite a big media value. If we were to build up a big following on Facebook, would Facebook get all the advertising revenue or can you negotiate with Facebook for that or is it just, or does Facebook keep everything? Um, I'm not, a, I'm, not a, I'm not an advertising expert, so I, I can't exactly speak to that, but I do know that when you do put something on Facebook, Facebook owns the data. Right. So, okay. Um, okay. sorry, I can't get more specific. Okay. And, and the other question is that our, our particular special interest is antiques and collectibles, but it breaks into lots of different themes. So you might have watches, vintage clothes. Would you th advise us, rather than have one page, to have all different pages per sector? I get this question all the time. Um, so really, I have three rules for that. So is your audience, are those audiences distinct enough? Is the person who likes watches just absolutely not interested in you know, dolls or teapots or whatever else? If there's absolutely no intersection, you know, that it might be a good idea. Uh, number two, are you gonna have uh, different enough content for each one? If you're just gonna recycle the same content on each page, um, it might not make sense to do that. And, and remember their strength and numbers, right? So, you know, you don't want to say, even though, you know, one audience might be small and really engaged, you know, if, they're, if you have 10 very small audiences, that's not as powerful as having one really large one with lots of fans and lots of engagement. Remember back to that edge rank algorithm where what gets displayed is um, based on how many likes and comments individual posts are getting. So if on each of your 10 pages, only, you know, the, each post is only getting three comments versus if you had one page and you were getting 50, there's much more power there. And the other part of that too, the third, the third rule is, do you have, again, the appropriate resources to staff and manage that? It's not, if you're not gonna do it well, it's not worth doing. Hi, I had a personal page for a while, but I never used it. And then I had a, have a business page. So this is a very basic question, but, um, all the, everything goes to my personal page. How can I get things, is this something I'm not turning on or turning you, off or something? Are Nothing, you posting to your personal page and not your business page? Well, I can't post to my business page. It, it just doesn't work. I, I have to go through my personal page. No, sorry, that's not quite right. But no, that's not, cancel that, I okay. can. But <laughs> okay. yes, yes, I am, <laughs> yes, I am. But nothing, but things always go to my personal page. I'm sorry, what do you mean by things go to your personal posts. page? Like posts. Posts. Um, you, you, did you know you can turn, if you started off with a profile page, you can turn it into by a By profile, you mean personal? Personal, yes. yes. Profile is personal, 
individual uh, page is business. So what it sounds like you've already started a business page, but you can, first of all, you can merge pages. So if some of you here have can created a... I'm sorry? You can. 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 You are able to. Yeah. You, you can either merge pages or you can also uh, transform a profile page into a business page if you started off with a profile and then decided, ooh, this is really more of a business. Um, it's just the settings in Facebook that you can change to merge it over. Well, I don't know which I've done, but I have got a business page. So, so you already have. Yeah, so yeah. Um, it may be because you started, if, if you mean by posts, go to your, your, your personal page. Yeah. What I would do is to start posting on your personal page that, hey, I have a business page now. If you're a business contact, yeah, please, huh. com, please you know, talk to me over here and just start cause, training your audience in a different way. You might even I've set a deadline. You know, right. the end of March, this is shutting down. You, you know, please go to the new business page. Right. And, and honestly, just from so, personal experience as a Facebook user, Liking a business that has a personal profile, it gets a bit awkward. I remember the time in a local town near me, I liked the personal page of a coffee shop. Okay. A couple weeks later, I posted something about my weekend, and the coffee shop liked it. And I thought, I don't want them to know about me. <laughs> if they were to offer, we're moving to a business page, then I would totally sign up for that instead of the personal profile. I don't want my personal page. I just want the business page. So well, well, the other thing is, have you made your uh, privacy settings? I don't Private? know, maybe okay. that's it. <laughs> so you might want to start there too, but before you do that, definitely, like Azure said, you know, start posting and saying, this is I've my profile. Yes, profo. I have done that. So what okay. should I do to my privacy, privacy settings? Um, you can change it so that people who haven't liked you um, or, or aren't friends with you, um, they can't post, they can't see your content. So for the people who already have, you might be in a little bit of trouble, but um, you wouldn't get any right. new ones. So it's obvious how to do that, is it, if I go on? Because I've, I've looked at it, it doesn't make sense to me, but... It, it, they do hide them. <laughs> I will say, Facebook is interested in making you know what, what you do very public. But if you do go up to the, um, if you go up to settings, and then there's a drop-down menu, and I think it says privacy controls. Yeah. Uh, if you click on that, I believe it says privacy controls. I hope it is. Something Privacy's like, in there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we can and we can help you out later too with the specifics as well. All right. Thanks. You just mentioned merging pages. Can that only be done when the page you want to merge to has higher uh, likes? They just need to be called the, something similar. So, for example, if you had two parts of your business and they were both called, you know, business A, you could then merge them. It, it doesn't matter. Um, usually, it does go to the one. It will merge into the one with the higher amount of likes. The smaller one will go into the larger one. If that's the question. Hi, um, I was a bit confused about the third party app you were talking about before. So I often see offers on Facebook which say if you like our page, two lucky winners will, I don't know, win something. So you're saying as a startup, a person can't post something like that about their business on Facebook? You can. Facebook, uh, just their, their rules and regulations, they, they want you to use a third party app and not use Facebook for the contest, but use a third party app for the contest. Okay. And the reason why they do that is because um, if you're offering something on Facebook and you're trading things like likes and comments, you're artificially uh, upping your edge rank score. Mm -hmm. So if you're saying something, you know, if you're getting tons of comments uh, in exchange for, say, a cash prize or, or something mm -hmm. else, that's not really based on engagement or how much people like your page or are responding to your content. Mm -hmm. Facebook considers that artificial. So okay. that's why they do that. And they want it also to be fair. So you're right. using a third-party app. And having your loyal fans, you know, who already liked your page, they can get that uh, offer, and also offering it to your new fans. You're fair to everybody. Okay. And can I also ask you, um, like, for a new startup, like my business is on uh, is about beauty online. Mm -hmm. So um, obviously, my friends will like my page or something like that when I first start off. But are there any other tips for when you're completely new, how to? get more people on board? Use every communication method you have at your disposal. Mm -hmm. Your website, your email newsletter, mm -hmm. uh, if you've got a LinkedIn page, if you've got a Twitter page. Mm -hmm. if you ha do you have a physical location, a store? Uh, no. No? It's just online. Oh, just online. Yeah. Okay. Um, anywhere you can talk about it. it. And again, those partnerships with other vendors, you know, if you're selling somebody else's products for them, yeah, yeah. go talk about it on their page. You know, okay. we'd like, you, you know, your fans to come over and 
you know, visit with us. And I think that's a really great point because that's such an underutilized feature of Facebook that pages can talk to other pages. So um, if you are um, uh, an admin of a page, up on the right hand side is a little button or a little piece of text that will say, use Facebook as your business. So if you press that button, then you also have a news feed or for your page as well. So <coughs> pages can like other pages. You can comment on a topic. Um, what we do at Constant Contact is we've liked a lot of other um, media pages or uh, of course the, the pages of our customers. And so we'll go in and respond as our brand. If you like, uh, if your page likes local bloggers or your local media, you can go on the, you know, the newspapers page and say, we've got this event coming up. We'd like you to know about it. Um, and, and partnerships work really well. There's um, a little restaurant near where I live in Massachusetts, and they're, they're a restaurant, but they also have event space, and they have a local yoga teacher that comes in and teaches in the events pa space. And I've liked both pages, and they're always talking about each other. Hey, come here, the teacher's gonna teach this awesome yoga class this weekend, or the yoga teacher's going, there's this event at this restaurant tonight, you gotta go see it. So it's a really good partnership, they, they play off of each other really well. Hi, for a brand new startup business that obviously has zero Facebook presence, I mean, realistically, with everything one has to do with setting up a business, when, when should you really, really be looking at Facebook as actually a, a useful way to spend time? Obviously, I can see LinkedIn and Twitter much more quickly. Do you have a sense of that? Yeah, sure. So why, let me just ask you a question first. So why do you see LinkedIn and Twitter as being first? Well, part, well, LinkedIn's because we're a B2B brand, okay. so that's the first reason. We're already using LinkedIn and Twitter personally, and I don't use LinkedIn or Twitter. Uh, sorry, I don't use Facebook personally. Okay. Um, so I would say you definitely want to make sure you have your website up and running and you have some sort of way, uh, uh, some sort of um, content uh, producing mechanism, whether that's a blog, whether that's curating lots of articles from, you know, if you're looking at Twitter for that. So, I mean, it really depends on, are you ready to put together a marketing plan? So if you're, if the answer to that is yes, make sure you're looping Facebook into that. And, you know, I don't, did you say you already created a page and just haven't posted or? No, uh, nothing at all. I, w I would go and, and grab the page and see if you can get the unique URL as soon as you can so that no one else can squat on that, um, uh, on that um, that name. So go and get it and just have it and keep it in your pocket. And when you're ready to put together a marketing plan, loop Facebook into it. It's not different than any other part of your business. It's when you're ready for the marketing piece, make sure you're looping it in. And right. this is a good call again for ask them. Ask yeah. people, would they want to interact with you on Facebook? And what do they want from you on Facebook? Okay, great, thank you. Hi. Hi. On Facebook, you can um, add people by email, for example. How many can you add at a time? Um, from a, a page? Uh, someone has on to like, like your page. Fine. You can't. So on you a new page, you have a facility where you can invite your contacts. So how many times can you do that? Well, you can, you can do that multiple times. It's just a matter of through email, you're saying. If you're using an email mechanism, I mean, you're in charge of how many times you, you email your list, but it's not a matter of, you know, is there a technology limitation? It's a matter of how many times do you want to put that in front of your, of your audience. So I would say if you just created a Facebook page, send out a dedicated email that says, hey, we're on Facebook, announce it, be really loud, use it, you know, talk about it on your other channels. Uh, and then in your other communications, um, for example, if you have other follow-up emails, make sure that you have um, follow us, you know, like us on Facebook buttons in your email as a secondary call to action. And every now and then you might want to go back to the back to the wall and say, hey, remember, you know, three months ago we sent out an email about liking us on Facebook. You can, you can send that out again. You, you can and indirectly get people there too. You can talk about in your newsletter, hey, we had this great conversation on Facebook. Here's some of the highlights. Here's the high points. Or even tools, people forget about this, your email signature, where you put your, your name and your address and your link to your website, put a little Facebook logo. That's a visual uh, request. You know, people will respond to that and they'll click on there and go to your Facebook page. They might not know you had one. Um, is it against Facebook rules to have two profile pages, one that you can link directly to your business page, 
and one that you can keep separate just for your own personal use because I don't want platform apps to access my personal information like my birth date and what my interests are and where I live. And if I ever leave my company, I want them to have access to the apps that I've set up through my own page. Right. Um, as long as you have separate email addresses, it's something that's possible for you to do. I know that Facebook encourages people to have one profile. Um, so from, a, from that perspective, the other thing that you can do is that a, a, the Facebook subscribe ability is if you're concerned with people you know, connecting with you and on, on Facebook and you might not necessarily want to be friends with them and you want to keep the relationship more professional, you can encourage them to subscribe to you so they will only get updates that you mark as generally public versus anything else that you want to keep private for yourself. I think, uh, I think that's it. If no one has any other questions, thank you so much. Oh, oh one more. <laughs> well, sorry, sorry, you said we could get a copy of the slides. Where did we get the copy? Everyone will get an email with the slides. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, we just wanted to say we know um, time is valuable. We, we um, appreciate your time today. Everybody here will get, you'll get, an, uh, a, we've basically said thank you for your permission to email you the slides. Um, there will be additional information on there. Um, small plug for constant contact if you're interested in social campaigns we do do free um, advice and support we do we are all about we don't succeed unless small businesses succeed so we like to provide support um, we'd also encourage you you know we do have a facebook page we'd like to start a conversation or community with the uk small businesses so um, we'll also include that in the slide so uh, we look forward to seeing you here in london and the rest of uk and thank you so much for your time today thank you.